Hi, this is Anna Galletli, and we are now going to start working on the lecture for Unit 4. This particular section is going to look at the histology of blood vessels. All right, so like with our other units, you will have um, periodic slides that have my notes on them. So they'll have definitions or explanations or the functions of these tissues. I'm not going to read them off to you, but you have the information here. All right, so let's start thinking about the actual histology and what we're looking at. So in both cases, when you're looking at an artery or vein, you've got the lumen, all right? The lumen is going to be the hollow tube where the blood is flowing. It is always going to be lined with simple squamous epithelium, which you can see right there, the simple squamous epithelium. Now this innermost layer we call the tunica intima or tunica interna. Either term is fine. Now the simple squamous epithelium this should be review from AMP um, 1. Um, we sometimes call that instead of epithelium, endothelium. So this is just a synonym and all it's doing is telling you that you're talking about the epithelium lining a tube of the cardiovascular or lymphatic system. Okay. The middlemost layer is called the tunica media, so media for middle. Okay, this is going to consist of smooth muscle, and you can see it here, and you can see it here. Now, what you should notice is that this one is thick, this one is really thin. Okay, another thing you should notice is the elastic lamina there and the elastic lamina there. Now, there's none over there on the vein. Okay, elastic lamina is a feature of arteries. Okay. The thickness of the tunica media is a feature of arteries. So over here you see it's much thinner and there's no elastic lamina. All right. Now the outermost layer is the tunica externa. Sometimes people call this adventitia, which is a more generic term. So this is going to typically be a layer of fibrous CT of some sort. Okay. Now. Coming out of these things, you're going to have feeder vessels, okay? You're going to get to arteries, to arterioles, and then eventually to a capillary bed, which is what you see here. Now, if we move this up, and we're going to zoom this in a little bit, what you will notice is that this artery has a tunica interna that is simple squamous epithelium, and it has this outermost layer, which is the tunica externa or adventitia, or sometimes people call it the basement membrane. It is really thin and flimsy. Um, depending on where it's at, you might have like a very fine areolar CTP, or it might just be basal lamina, kind of where it's gluing itself to another um, tissue type. Um, everywhere but capillaries, you've got three layers. All right, capillaries only have two layers the tunica interna and the tunica externa. The tunica externa is either going to be basement membrane or a thin film of a real or CTP or maybe reticular depending on where you're at. All right, let's go on to the next slide. All right, so here we've got a notes um, slide. And again, I want you to memorize this and you should be able to know the difference between these things, okay? Next slide. All right, here, I'm going to talk about this a little bit because I want you to do this. I want you to rewrite this slide. I want you to make a concept map or a table or something, but rewrite it in your own handwriting, actually thinking about what you're writing, okay? You need to be able to distinguish an artery from a vein. So thick tunica media, thin tunica media. Because of the tunica media, all right, in direct relationship to that, you have a rounded lumen. The elastic lamina also creates the, lamin, the rounded lumen. You don't have that in veins, so you get a flat, collapsed, elongated lumen, okay? Now, some cadavers might have some blue tinting in them, but not always, it just depends on how it's preserved, okay? The other major thing, and this one you don't really see, but you need to memorize, is how the blood is moved. In arteries, it's being moved primarily by the pressure created by the heart, okay? But also, the tunica media is going to dilate, so vasodilation and vasoconstriction. 
And that is also going to play a role in how effectively the blood or how quickly blood is moving through those tubes. Okay? Now over in veins, a special feature are venous valves. Not all veins have these. They're going to find these primarily in the arms and legs in the medium-sized veins. Okay? Now veins do have a little bit of pressure, but they don't have a ton. So in the arms and legs, you're going to be using skeletal muscle to help move that blood along. Plus, in the cavities, you use pressure changes to help move that blood along. Okay? All right, so here we are looking at um, slides that's from your APR, and we're looking at tunica media, and we're specifically looking at the aorta. Okay? What I like about this slide is the staining they use, where you can see these fine lines right here, and here they highlight them for you. Those are the elastic fibers of this elastic connective tissue proper. Elastic connective tissue proper. Um, it is very hard to see elastic fibers in most um, tissues. Um, they have to be stained special in order to do that. Um, and in AMP1, you should have noticed that we didn't have any great slides for elastic connective tissue proper. But this one's actually pretty decent. All right, so here's a lab slide, and we're looking at a medium-sized artery. And what you should notice is the lumen with the red blood cells in there, okay? Now, I can see three layers very easily, here, here, and here. And what I'm looking at is color, consistency, and content, okay? How is it staining? How smooth or rough is it? And what is included in it? So right here, I see these ribbon-like structures. This is the tunica interna, and it's going to consist of the endothelium. But the thing that's making the ribbon is actually this, the internal elastic lamina. And you're going to see this in all medium and large size arteries. Okay. Now here is the smooth muscle. And there's going to be two rows. you got rows going this way. All right, and then you got the row here where it's been cut transversely, okay? Um, when I look at this, it's really hard to tell that it's smooth muscle because of the magnification. These lines here, the darker staining lines, those are all the nuclei. So what I visualize is a river with a bunch of salmon swimming in it, okay? And that's the salmon's bodies. Then here, the salmon have all stopped swimming and they've stuck their heads out. All right, that's the other layer of smooth muscle. When I'm identifying smooth muscle in the human body, because of the magnifications we use, you really don't see the spindle shape. So I'm doing it based on context. So the fact that this is next to structures that make it look like an artery tells me that this is smooth muscle and not any other kind of muscle, okay? And then this outermost layer here, is going to be the adventitia, okay, or the tunica externa. All right, let's go on. All right, what I like about this slide is you've got the artery and the vein next to each other. So here I have a rounded lumen. Here I have a flat lumen. Here, up here, I've got a really distinctive ribbon-like structure for my tunica interna because of the elastic lamina right there. Okay, I can see a super thick tunica media. I where's the tunica media here? I mean, you can you can't even like hardly see it. It's like there's some of it right there, and then some of it's right right here on the vein. So you can see that the tunica media is really thick on that artery. So this is a really nice compare and contrast slide. All right, looking at a lot of tissues when you start getting. Um, closer to where the capillary beds are, you're going to start seeing arterioles that have been cut transversely. And what you'll notice is that the, they're basically round, you get a hint of the tunica media, you really can't see the tunica interna very well, but you can tell that it's staining like simple squamous wood right there. Okay, here's another one right here. Okay, there's another one right there. Um, again, you get experience identifying these after time and you start um, just knowing that if you see this type of a cut that it's most likely a arterial okay 
All right, I threw in this slide um, because it's really super cute. But what I like is you can see um, this is a large capillary. And I can see all the little red blood cells going in and through it. Now, eventually, some capillaries get really, really narrow. So they're only that wide in contrast to this one. And the blood vessel, the red blood cells actually need to um, become kind of torpedo shaped. That's why I say this is a large capillary, and then my little drawing would be a small capillary. Okay, next slide. And here is a really nice example of a small capillary where you can see the red blood cells are having to go through single file and that they've taken on more of a torpedo shape. All right, now I am looking at a vein, and I know it's a vein um, because the tunica media is not very thick in contrast to the adventitia or the tunica interna. Um, because of the way it's cut, you can't really tell from the lumen, but you know that it's um, the vein because of this thin tunica media. All right, so I'm gonna count to five, and while I'm counting to five, I want you to tell yourself which side is artery and which side is vein. So, go. All right, so this is artery, this is vein. How do you know? One, a little bit from that lumen, although it's kind of hard to compare this one to the vein because of the way it's been cut. Two, the ribbon shape. Three, that thick tunica media. Okay, those were your key indicators that the one on the right is an artery. All right, here we go again. I want you to find the artery. I'm going to slowly count to five. All right, are you ready? Here is your artery. Here is your nerve. And here is your vein. How do you know? Round lumen is the first one. Flat lumen. All right, I can see the ribbon of the tunica interna. No ribbon right there. Very thick, smooth muscle, not thick, smooth muscle. Over here on that nerve, this has absolutely no similarity. It's basically kind of a spiral effect, um, and that's your nerve fibers. All right, that was the end of part one on unit um, four. So um, now we can go on to the next one and we will talk about, I believe, the um, gross anatomy of the upper body blood vessels.